So solving quadratics in general, remember there's like a few ways to do it. One is awesome. Whenever you solve a quadratic by factoring, that's like good news because it's totally clear and everybody enjoys factoring. It's pretty easy. The second, you know, maybe most desirable and it's starting to become pretty lame is probably solving using the quadratic formula. Uh, and that's the whole negative b plus or minus the root b squared, that whole drama. But this, this video and this whole deal has to do with solving quadratics using completing the square. I actually don't hate it. I feel like it's the most hated on method of the three, you know, in America. But I have two examples. Here's a little easy one and here's a lame one. And I think that the, the completing the square, again, is it really depends on the scenario. That's why there's three methods and you can use any of the three depending on what it looks like. I would totally do this one by factoring. And I'll show you that you can do it from, you know, factoring or completing the square and get the same answer. But first, let me teach you what completing the square is, okay? So here's your quadratic. And this works for any quadratic in the world. The first thing you do is you take this guy. Because you can't, let's say I'm not a good factorer. And I can't figure it out. It's too hard. And I say, I'm, this is too hard. And it's his fault. The negative 6 is confusing me. So I'm going to use completing the square. You take this guy every time, the C value, a x squared plus bx plus c, the C value, and you get him out. Now I'm left with x squared minus x, leave a space, equals positive 6 because I added the 6 over. Okay? So step 1 in completing the square is you take this last value and you get it out of town. Right? So now I, what's weird is I have this empty gap. And what you do, which seems illegal, but it's not, is you're going to invent a value, right? Any value you want, and you're going to put it in here to both sides. And that's actually sort of a lie. It's not any value you want. It's half the middle guy squared, half the B value squared. So over here, I look at this, and the B value, the middle guy right here, or the B value is negative 1. Negative 1. I want half that squared. Half of negative 1 is negative 1 over 2. Squared is 1 fourth. I can already tell that you don't like this, but hang in there, okay? So, so here I did this fancy trick where basically I took half that squared, okay? Now this is where the whole, like, this is why people do this, okay? So here I have... Actually, I'll show you one, one more step. So here I have x squared minus x plus a fourth now. And then over here I have, I'm going to change this. I'm going to add these fractions, which again, people hate. But let's say this is times 4, top also times 4. This would be 24 over 4 plus 1 over 4. See how I did that? That's my adding fractions abilities. Oh, right, I have a video on that. Go check that out. Anyways, now this is getting a little bit lame, but also it's starting to make sense. So now I have x squared minus x plus a fourth equals 25 over 4. I just added those. All right? I'm going to bring this math up top. I'm going to bring it up top. So what do I do now? That does not look good. How is that even like a cool method? This, magically, if you took this guy here and you factored it, right? So if I took x squared minus x plus a fourth over here equals 25 over 4, and I factored this guy, it is a perfect square, and that's not an accident. That happened because earlier in the day, like, I don't know, 38 seconds ago, I said find half him squared. It makes that magically factor beautifully to be exactly this. Ready for this? First of all, these are identical. No matter what, in every single completing the square problem, these are going to be identical. And the fastest way to know this is it's always half the middle guy here and here, right? And if you don't believe me, you could foil this and it would end up being this, okay? So him times him is him, him plus him is him, it worked out. The reason the whole thing about them being identical is even remotely cool, which I, you probably wouldn't agree that it is cool actually, but the reason it's cool is, let's make some room, is that now is the magical step of all steps that you're supposed to enjoy. Now I rewrite this because it's identical can't I just write it like that, right? That seems pretty legit. I can just write it like that. It's the same thing, so I'll put it squared. Okay, I kind of feel like there should be a drum roll right now. Here's where it happens. Now, because that's squared, the easiest way to solve this is to just root both sides. The root kills the square, 
they basically dissolve each other. That square gets murdered by that root. They're gone. I have, I don't even need the parentheses anymore. Now I have on this side, x minus a half equals. What is the root of 25 over 4? Don't panic because it's a fraction. You root the top and you root the bottom. That would be 5 over 2. And don't forget, whenever you root both sides, you have plus or minus 5 over 2. If you forget the plus or minus, you're going to get an F and that will be on your permanent record, okay? Like well into your 80s, people are gonna know about this. So put plus or minus. Now, this is easy, final step, plus a half to both sides. Slightly weird, make sure that half is in, when you add the half, make sure you add it before the plus or minus. So now I have a half plus or minus five halves. And if you see, what is a half plus five halves? That's six halves, comma, what's a half minus five halves? That's negative four halves, and these totally come out clean to three and negative two, and those are my answers. I know what you're thinking. I could have factored that and got those, and you're right. I would way rather factor this one, okay? Here's why factoring is not always cool. First of all, it is always cool if you could do it. And this one would factor out to those values. But now, what happens if you get one like the second example, right? Because you're telling Ryan, you're like, listen, nerdling, I'm never going to complete the square. That looks horrible and it'll never happen on my watch. What if you cannot factor? All right, this one's gone. I'm going to erase this easy street one. What about this one? Okay, factor that. Oh, you can't, right? So now what do I do? If of the three methods, factoring is ruled out, which it will be oftentimes, now you're down to quadratic formula or again, completing the square, which is this lecture. I'm not going to do quadratic formula because that's my other vid, but this one we're going to do again. One thing that I haven't taught you yet about completing the square. You cannot, I repeat, don't start until the first coefficient is a 1. Or in other words, there is no first coefficient. It would be 1. So I'm going to start by dividing the whole problem by 2. Over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2. Now I have x squared plus 2x plus 5 halves equals 0. Okay, and those fraction haters out there, I can tell you're mad. Bear with me. So, same thing. Eliminate C. Remember we agreed the first step of completing the square is get this sucker out of here. X squared plus 2x space equals negative 5 halves. I feel like this problem might not be solvable. You are so lucky. Actually, you know what? Never mind. I'm not going to let you off the hook. I'm going to make that into a minus. The reason that just happened, that little moment of pause of mine, was because later when we root both sides, you can never root a negative. So that would have been, I would have just misled America and the rest of the world. So I fixed that. I fixed that. I fixed that. Now I added five halves over. <whistles> off the hook. Okay. What is half this squared? Remember the value that I put here and here is half that squared. Half of two is one. One squared is one, plus one, plus one. If you're wondering why you have to do it to both sides, that's a mathematical law. You can't just add a number to the left side randomly when you're in the mood. But you can add one to the left side as long as you balance it by adding to the right. So, next step here, I take this. Remember, I'm gonna factor that. This one's pretty easy, x plus one, x plus one. Not an accident that they're identical. That happened because I chose a specific value which was half that squared. Now this guy, 5 over 2 plus 1, let's change this, over 2, over 2. This looks like 7 over 2. Even I admit, even the math nerd admits this is looking pretty lame, but it'll work. So now, let's bring it up top. So now I have x plus 1 squared equals 7 over 2. Remember, we agreed that that was cool that I could do that since it's identical. I'm going to root both sides, and here's the beauty. This is x plus 1 equals plus or minus... I'm watching you. Plus or minus root 7 over 2. When you do completing the square, you can leave the answer looking atrocious and it's totally cool. You're going to minus 1 to both sides. Your answer would be x equals negative 1 plus or minus root 7 over 2. Done. Yes, you might have a teacher that wants you to rationalize a denominator, which means you can't have a root 2 in the bottom. Not today. Don't worry. I'm going to allow it because I'm pretty lenient. This is your answer. Completing the square, 
Do you hate it? Do you love it? Either way, it is one of three ways to solve a quadratic. You know, and now that you know what it looks like, if you want to ban it for the rest of your life and only do factoring in the quadratic formula, totally cool with me. It's going to be fine. I'm not going to be upset about that. So that's it. And remember, if you're having a hard time with your uh, algebra class at your local high school, you can take this online at Silicon Valley High School. And uh, if you pass it there, the credits will be transferred back to your school.